Hey curl friends, how's it going? I am talking to you on perhaps one of my not so good hair days. The humidity outside has suddenly just gone crazy bananas, but there's another reason why my hair is not looking its best. I'm in dire need of a haircut. It has literally been nine months since I got a haircut. I would advise you to not go as long as I have. I would say probably about every probably every four to six months, honestly, for diva cuts, and that's what I'm going to be talking about in this video today, is a fair amount of time to go between haircuts, assuming that you're trying to grow it out a little bit or you're not trying to maintain a shorter length, obviously. But for the purposes of today's video, nine months is way too long to go without a haircut, so my hair is freaking out. And it's long, I really don't wanna lose any length. I'm almost at bra strap length here, as you can tell. And um, I love the length, but the nature of a haircut is to lose some length after all because I've got a lot of dead ends. You can probably see that there are some areas here that just aren't curling like they should. And you know, it's just not happy with me and no amount of deep conditioning is going to make up for that. So let's talk a little bit about um, the considerations that you should think about before you decide to get a diva cut and what does it really mean to get a diva cut. There are other kinds of curly cuts out there. There's a group called the Curly Hair Art Artistry um, group and Scott Musgrave heads that up and so he's created a sort of curly haircut with a technique I believe he calls hair mapping. I don't know a lot about it to be honest. Um, I haven't experienced that myself, but it's it's kind of a prestigious group of people who, um, stylists who get together and talk about ways to cut curly hair. Then there's also the We Dad, I think it's the Carve and Slice curly cut. I know that Diane Mary, if you have ever followed her on YouTube or Instagram, she's a great beauty blogger and she's just, she's a cool, cool chick. I really like her. Um, I don't know her personally, but we're sort of curly friends, if you can say that, on the internet. Yeah, I don't know. It's a small, smallish kind of world. But she likes their, um, she goes to the Weed Ad flagship salon in Manhattan and gets her carbon slice cuts and she really, really likes them. I have gotten one diva cut before, so I'll tell you a little bit about The that. very first question you might need to ask is, wait, what is a diva cut? So a diva cut is basically a curly haircut on dry hair. So what you wanna make sure that you do, and this is really important, you need to go to your appointment with your hair styled the way you normally wear it. And I know you're thinking, oh my gosh, what a waste. I will have washed it and styled it and used all that product and gone through all of that because you know we try to wash our hair as little as possible. But your hairstylist, since they're giving you a curly haircut, needs to make sure that they can see your hair the way you normally wear it so that they can get the shape right for the way your waves or curls normally fall um, so that they can make sure that they trim up any straighter pieces to to get the most um, wave out of them possible. Um, it's really all about shape and you might have a section of hair that's a little bit straighter. You guys know about my straight section. And, and they might wanna cut that just a little bit shorter so that it is it evens out with an area that curls up a little bit more. Now, the other thing to think about is this. Don't get a diva cut if you still want to wear your hair straight some of the time. You really need to be wearing your hair curly or wavy most, if not all of the time, because once you straighten your hair with a diva cut, it's not going to look good. There are going to be sections that are that are straighter than others, I mean, sorry, that are cut shorter than others. Some curls might be cut shorter than others because they don't curl as much as the curl next to it. So it's really, really important that if this is something you wanna invest in, that you do it because you like to wear your hair curly all of the time. So I got my first diva cut about three months after I had started my curly girl journey. So I started it in March and I got my curly cut in, I believe late June. And I was not impressed. I went to, I spent way too much money and I went to a level three diva trained stylist. And just so you know, there are three levels of diva certification. And maybe this is pretty obvious, but there's level one, level two, level three. Uh, I think level one is they call Diva Inspired and they do an online training course. And then level two, to achieve that level, they do some hands-on training. And then I believe level three, they go to New York to the Diva Chan flagship salon and actually do some hands-on training. And I think they have to complete a certain number of hours of work there to achieve that level of certification. So when I got my, my haircut with my level three, 
diva stylist uh, about nine months ago I was really I mean my expectations were up here I was really expecting a lot I was expecting a lesson I was expecting she would just know what to do with my wavy hair and that I would walk out of there with the curliest hair I had ever seen and none of this happened so let me tell you a little bit about what I did wrong the first thing I did wrong was not doing enough research on my stylist so you have got to take it upon yourself to get on the internet and Find out everything you can about your stylist. Go to Instagram, go to Facebook, go to Twitter, go to Pinterest. See if they have, look up, okay, so the first thing you're going to do is look on the Diva website and see if you can find a stylist in your area or close to you. Or you can look up Weedad or Curly Hair Artistry um, stylists on their respective websites. I believe it's curlyhairartistry.com and weedad.com. You should be able to look all of those up that way. But for the purposes of the rest of this video, I'm just going to talk about Diva because that is the experience that I've had. So you can go to the Diva website and look up by zip code, I believe, curly hair artists in your area. And they will tell you if they're level one, level two, or level three. So from there, jot down their names. Um, there's a map on their website, or at least there used to be look up the ones that are closest to you, maybe start that way, and start Googling them. Try to find them in social media. What I would look for are the following things. Are they active on social media? I think that will tell you a lot because that's really how people find out information these days. And if they don't have information on social media or they're not passionate about posting pictures of their work, you're not going to be able to find out anything about them and you're not going to know what you're walking into when you go into your appointment with them. Um, the second thing is you want to see pictures of their work. The more pictures of their work that you can find, the better, because that will tell you if the two of you will be on the same page when it comes to style. I mean, every hair artist, no matter what kind of training they have, is going to have a sense of their own kind of style and what they think looks good. So you've got to be on kind of the same page. So find one that you like their cuts, it, assuming that you have this this luxury and that they, you know, there's not one within 50 miles of you. And I know that that is the case for many people. So do what you can with what you have available. Make sure that if you do find them on social media, don't be shy, ask them some questions. If you can get in touch with them, leave a comment on one of their Instagram posts or send them a Facebook message or post on their Facebook page. Um, comment on one of their, their Pinterest photos and you know, ask if their haircut time would include a lesson. That was one of the things that I really wanted in my first haircut because I was so new to the curly girl method. I wanted somebody to show me how to do the squish chicken dish method. I wanted to learn new ways of applying products and ways to diffuse my hair that maybe I wasn't aware of. I wanted a real hands-on lesson and I didn't get that. Instead, I got a stylist who told me, well, I don't really know how to style wavy hair. You guys always know how to do your hair better than I do. And I was just shocked and so disappointed. But this was a stylist who had really curly hair who focused more on curly hair. So that was kind of a hard lesson for me at kind of a high price tag. So ask questions before you go if you're able to. Um, and if, you, if they're not real responsive on social media, when you call to book your appointment, ask the person who's booking the appointment if a lesson is included in your cut that day. My last bit of advice is this. Take pictures of what you want. Multiple pictures. Take a picture of what this is how I'm doing it anyway. I'm taking a picture of my goal. This is what I would like my hair to look like in six to 12 months. So how can you help me get there? The other pictures that I'm taking are, these are pictures of your work that I admire and I would like for my hair to look like this way, this way in the front, I like the shape on the back, whatever. So if you can find pictures, and it doesn't have to be of the work of the stylist that you're going to see, but if you can find pictures of naturally, and this is the challenge, naturally curly or naturally wavy hair and look on Pinterest because there, there is some out there, um, and see if you can just find other curly hair artists on Instagram. Um, you know what, if you follow my Instagram, um, or if you find me on Instagram, look at who I'm following. I'm following a lot of curly hair artists. Carlene Sanchez is one, Jessica Guster is another, Glenn Loves Curls, Angela Hicks is one. Um, who am I leaving out? Toya, the curly hair studio. She's amazing. If I could go to her, and I think she's in Oregon, I totally would. Her haircuts are all just awesome and amazing. Um, there's also Krista Levitt who is in Canada. So for you Canadian wavies and curlies, check her out. Um, there is the Curl Whisperer. 
and gosh, there are just so many. So look those maybe three Maybe follow up. a bunch of those, and they all post pictures of their work. So they're a great place. Oh, Scott Musgrave. Don't forget to follow Scott Musgrave. Um, so look up these people and um, see if you can find pictures of their work because they're all going to be natural, not with a curling iron, naturally wavy or curly hair. Um, and then you can find pictures of what you like that you can bring with you. Now here's something to think about, okay? Your hair is not going to look exactly like any of the pictures you take in. It's just not because your wavy curly hair is different. Your texture is different. Um, your density is different. Your wave pattern is unique all to you. So don't be frustrated because your hair doesn't look the same. It's going to be your own hair's wonderful version of whatever picture you take okay. in. I hope this video was helpful to some of you guys. I know there are a lot of things to think about before you go get a haircut, especially a curly haircut because it is so different from the ones that we've all probably gotten for the majority of our lives. So if you have any comments or anything to add, please list them below. I would love to know what kinds of things that you take into consideration before getting a haircut, especially a curly haircut. And if I've left anything out, please let me know. All right guys, have a great curl day and I'll talk with you soon. See ya. Bye.